Now, the finance minister, Tito Mbuweni, is currently briefing the media uh, following the president's announcement of the 500 billion rand package that's aimed at helping the economy to recover during the lockdown. Let's listen in. The set of fiscal and monetary policy interventions. These interventions draw together the skills and expertise of people in the private and public sector. At this time of great need, our macroeconomic response must not only be about the high-level fiscal and monetary variables. Those are very important. Our interventions must also be about our people, particularly the poor, the infirm, and the vulnerable. It must also be about businesses, large, medium, and small, that drive our economy and create work for our people. It must be about our banking and financial system to make sure that money continues to flow through the veins of our economy. Our focus has been on how to use the levers of macroeconomic policy, i.e. fiscal and monetary policy, in a coordinated way which delivers an immediate, targeted, and clear response. Wisely used together, these key levers can deliver a counter-cyclical boost directly into the heart of the economy. But if these two levers work against each other, or if the levers are used incorrectly, then we can be left with substantially worse outcomes. We must be careful not to choose a path that seems easy or too good to be true. An easy path, more often than not, leads to a bad destination. And if something seems to be too good to be true, the old saying goes, it probably usually is. Over the last week, the teams from the National Treasury and the South African Reserve Bank have together worked on a set of macroeconomic responses to the crisis. Governor Lisecha Kanyaho, who I fondly refer to as Governor Number 10, and I have convened meetings between the National Treasury and the South African Reserve Bank, and these have been going on even as late as last week. Our key discussion point was to appropriately calibrate the fiscal and monetary policy interventions and provide appropriate advice. We must always balance short-term fiscal and monetary policy intervention with long-run sustainability. Working under the leadership of our president, we calibrated a fiscal package of measures of approximately 500 billion rand. Governor Lisecha has already unveiled a monetary and policy package of approximately another 500 billion. This will bring additional life into the whole financial system and will utilize the combined balance sheet of the country in a careful but appropriate fashion. This takes our economy-wide measures to over 800 billion rand in interventions. Let me say that again. Our combined fiscal and monetary policy package is well over 800 billion rand. This is a major fiscal and monetary policy response. Extraordinary. The main components of the fiscal response can be thought of in five components, namely, firstly, an extraordinary health budget to respond to the virus, 20 billion rand. Secondly, the relief of hunger and social distress. Thirdly, support for companies and workers. Fourthly, the phased in reopening of the economy, which the President spoke about last night, uh, April 23, 2020, and finally the supportive monetary banking and financial market measures. The President has spoken in detail about these components and there's no need here to, to repeat. 
Let me give a short summary of our interventions. Under the first part of the package, we are setting aside an amount of 20 billion rand to be directed at addressing our efforts in dealing with the pandemic. Under the second part of the package, the government will substantially increase our social security interventions. We are directing 50 billion rand towards relieving the plight of those who are most desperately affected by the virus. The child support grant beneficiaries, that is the children, will receive an extra 300 rand in May. From June, we'll change the way the system works a little, which means from June to October, caregivers, typically mothers or grandparents, will receive an additional 500 rand each month. All other grants will be topped up by 250 rand per month for the next six months. We'll use our existing system to disperse these grants. In addition, a special COVID-19 social relief of distress grant of 350 rand a month for the next six months will be paid to individuals who are currently unemployed and do not receive any form of income or social grant or any UF payment. This is the missing link that needs to be closed uh, in the system. Our teams are working closely with the Department of Social Development, uh, SASA and other teams from the Payments Association of South Africa, the Banking Association and others to identify easier payment systems to be used in this regard. Time is of the essence and discussions cannot go on forever. On the third part of the package, we have rolled out an extensive set of tax relief measures and support for workers. My other colleagues, in particular Minister Tulas Nisi, will speak in detail on the support for workers from the IF, UIF system. On the tax side, our proposals include, one, an increase in the expanded employment tax incentive amount from 500 to 750 rand per employee. Two, a skills development levy holiday of four months from the 1st of May 2020. Three, fast tracking VAT refunds. Four, deferring the payment of excise duty on alcoholic beverages and tobacco products. Five, a three-month deferral for filing and first payment of carbon tax liabilities to 31st October 2020. Six, a postponement of some of the corporate tax proposals in this year's budget on interest expenses and assess, assess losses. Seven, an increase in the deferment of employee te employees tax. Eight, an increase in the turnover threshold for automatic deferrals. Nine, we have been particularly pleased to see how quickly the nation has pulled together. A solidarity fund has been set up and has shown us a new way of doing things, quicker, faster, and reliable. Already the Solidarity Fund has spent over a billion rand on the key protective equipment in the health system, but are also intervening in providing additional social uh, relief. And I'm very pleased to say that there are uh, a number of uh, South African professionals who have donated their time to work with the Solidarity Fund. Ten, and finally, we have expanded access to living annuity funds by allowing individuals to adjust the proportion they receive as annuity income instead of waiting up to one year until their next contract anniversary date. The combined effect of these revenue and expenditure measures have naturally changed the fiscal framework. That said, for the next couple of weeks, many of these measures can still be accommodated within the current framework. I will shortly be tabling a revised budget bill uh, before Parliament.
to deal with all of these measures. Where we are in this together, as we know, South Africa is resilient and we have the ability to get through tough times together. We are not the only ones who have been affected by the virus. Global economic growth is expected to be reduced quite substantially during, the, during 2020 and rebound in 2021. Our economy as well is going to follow a similar path. And we're quite confident that if we continue with our structural reforms, we'll be able to come back to a sustained growth trajectory. With these few words, uh, Mr. Mtem, Minister Mtembu, I would like to uh, say that we remain ready and committed to do whatever it takes to get our country going forward, to support our firms and businesses, to support the old, the infirm, and those without any incomes, so that we can show solidarity amongst ourselves for the benefit of our people and our society. Thank you very much.